Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here and welcome back to the railway. Most people know that Hornby produce a Harry Potter train set, but did you know that there are two different versions of the Hornby Hogwarts Castle locomotive? Well, let's look at them. In the Harry Potter movies, the Hogwarts Castle locomotive was played by this engine, the Great Western Hall class Alton Hall. And this is a bit of a source of confusion for many people because there also exists a Great Western Castle class and most people assume that the Warner Brothers Studios used the Castle class to play the Hogwarts Castle locomotive, which to be fair would have made a lot of sense, but they didn't. They used the Hall class, which is a slightly smaller, perhaps a slightly quainter looking design, but back in the early 2000s when Hornby was putting their first Harry Potter train set together, they made a mistake. Because they chose the Castle class to stand in as the Hogwarts Castle locomotive. So what happened? Did Hornby just get confused like so many other people? Was it a simple mistake? Well, no, I don't think so. For the simple reason that in the early 2000s, Hornby did not have a decent Hall class model that they could have used. The only Hall class they did have was the one you can see behind me here, which is a very old model. It dates back several decades. It's very outdated. The level of detail isn't very good. And the chassis is of a kind that Hornby hadn't produced for years and years, and it would have needed a complete redevelopment. So what could Hornby have done? Could they have developed an all new locomotive so that they could create a realistic Hogwarts Castle loco? Well, sure, they could, but to develop a locomotive from scratch to come up with all the tooling, it costs an awful lot of money. So what they did instead was they just chose to dress up the slightly less old fashioned, while still quite dated though, actually, Castle class, which is, I think it's an Airfix model originally, still goes back several decades, but still, this is the locomotive that they chose to use for years. But in 2015, Hornby did develop a Hall class from scratch. Now, I'm not sure whether they did this with Harry Potter in mind, but either way, at long last, they finally had a Hall class that they could use. So since then, this has been the Hornby Hogwarts Castle locomotive. And of course, this is a Hall class, and so it's much more realistic. And if you buy a Hornby Harry Potter train set today, then it is this locomotive you will get. So today we're going to be taking a look at the two Hornby Harry Potter locomotives. We'll take a look at what the differences are and we'll find out whether the new Hornby Hogwarts Castle locomotive was a worthy upgrade from the old one. So let's take a look. One of the craziest differences between these two models is immediately noticeable on picking up the locos, and that is the loco weight. And this is important because the more an engine weighs, the more it's going to be able to pull, assuming the motors have sufficient torque and whatnot. But if we put the new current Hornby Hall class on the scales, you can see they come in at around 271, 272 grams, something like that. If we put the old design onto the scales instead, <laughs> you can see the difference, 435 grams I'm getting there, which is almost double. So even though the new Hall class is much more expensive and whatnot, and definitely more detailed, don't get me wrong, it is the older one which is by far the heaviest model. So now then, let's take a look at some of the detailed differences between these two models. And you might think that this is a bit redundant because, of course, the locomotive in the films was a Hall class and not a castle. So, of course, the new Hall class model is going to be the more accurate. And you'd be absolutely right. Yes, of course, the Hall class is the much more detailed and much more accurate of the two models. However, and this might surprise you, there are several details that I much prefer on the old Hornby Castle class locomotive. The first major one is the Hogwarts Express nameplate. The one you're looking at now is on the original Hornby Castle class locomotive, and as you can see, it looks fantastic. The quality of the printing is wonderful, and the finish is excellent as well. It looks like a genuinely quality piece, looks just like the real thing did. And then we look at the new one, this is the new Hornby Hall class version of that same nameplate, and it looks absolutely terrible in comparison. I never really noticed this until I started comparing the two, but now I have, I can't unsee the difference there. The new one is far, far worse. 
And there are one or two things like that. The chimney, for instance, on the old Hogwarts castle, this is a real metal piece, which obviously gives it a real metal finish. On the new hall class, the chimney is just painted plastic, and in my opinion, it does not look anywhere near as good. The same thing is kind of true on the new whistles, because again, these are just made of plastic, and on the old castle Hogwarts castle, they were metal, which do have a better finish, I think, but the detailing isn't really there on the old one, so perhaps the new wins out there. Another feature is that the old castle had sprung buffers. Look at this, yeah actual metal sprung buffers. The new Hall class variant actually just has plain unsprung buffers. So it's quite surprising to me to find that there are many features of the old model which are much better than the new one. But generally speaking, the new model is much more detailed. So the finesse in the level of detail is much better. So if you look at the running plate, you can see we've got all the riveting, the lamp irons are present on this version, and there's nothing like that on the old castle model. No rivets or anything on the running plate, and no lamp brackets either. The wheels are significantly better on this version as well, as you can see much more realistic, and also the whole cylinder and crosshead assembly looks much more realistic. You can see that all of the moving parts on the new Hall class version are made out of metal, whereas on the old one they're this really cheap looking plastic which just does not look great. So the new one has definitely got it beat there. The new one also has a lamp on the front. I mean, it's, it's a bit bad, really, isn't it? If this was a proper lamp that looked like a lamp and not just a massive overscale LED poking through the front, then this would be far better. But I can see some people who really have an eye for detail maybe preferring not to have a lamp there at all and just having it slightly less unrealistic. It's not 100% clear which of the two versions is the most realistic in this area. The internal cab detail is quite a bit better on the new hall class as well. Yeah, there's some separately fitted parts in there, I think. The old castle, yeah, much more basic, really. And I think the quality of the paintwork is slightly better on the new hall class as well. The lining looks particularly crisp on the boiler, and I think the big difference is in the crests on the tender. So here's the old one. Looks pretty good. Yeah, there's nothing wrong at all with the quality of the printwork there. But then if we swap it out for the new hall class, the modern one, I do think there is a noticeable difference there, and I think the modern one looks much, much better. But still, it's very interesting to look at the differences between two models that you'd think would be almost identical, because quite clearly they're not. Let's move on though, and we'll talk about the mechanism in these two models, and then we'll compare their performance. So there are the two subjects down onto the track, and I'm going to show you how they perform in just a second. In terms of mechanism, quite honestly, neither of these are great, but there is one that comes out on top, and you can probably guess which one that is. So in terms of pickups, both Locos have pickups on their driving wheels, pickups being, of course, how the power is transferred from the track through the wheels and then to the motor. It's power collection, basically. However, the old Hornby Castle Hogwarts Castle does not have any pickups on its tender wheels. The modern Hornby Hogwarts Castle Hall does have pickups on its tender wheels, and in fact there's an electrical connection between loco and tender, so that the modern Hornby Hall is DCC ready. That means you can put a decoder in and run this on digital, and as you'll see later on, the Castle version does not have any DCC capabilities at all. Removing the base keeper plate from the modern hall version, you can see that it does come off for servicing, but there are no proper bearings on the driving wheels or anything. The old castle version is a little bit less serviceable. The rear screw is actually bolted, so to replace this base keeper plate, you do have to remove the body and replace that bolt. The pickups are hardwired, so you can't pull the base keeper plate away from the loco for servicing purposes. You can move it a bit, but that's all. And of course, there are no proper bearings on the driving wheels. So at the moment, the old design is way behind. In terms of the motor, the old castle has this strange pancake motor design. It's a bit like a ring-filled motor, although technically this has two magnets, I believe, so it's not really a ring-filled, but it's that kind of thing. Not great to service these, they have a strange habit of just not working for some reason when you reassemble them and then you do it again and they're fine. Not the most reliable, not the most powerful as we're going to see. And as you can also see there is no DCC on board. The modern hall still has a three pole motor inside, not a five pole motor, which are generally better performers. But I would still go ahead and say this is the better motor, it's a can motor, it doesn't really need servicing. So that's more decent and it does have a flywheel as you can see. 
In terms of the pulling power, the old castle has 0.42 newtons of tractive effort, which should allow it to haul about 26 coaches on straight and level track. The new design is much worse than that because of how much lighter it is, at 0.22 newtons, which is only about 16 coaches, although the torque in this mechanism seems to be much better than the torque in this mechanism, as we're going to see. But let's start with a performance test on the old design. Let's see if this thing still works. I mean, I just did that for the camera. I know it still works because I had it running up, uh, warming up a minute ago. But as you can see, it seems reasonably smooth. Um, it's got some good speed to it, so I don't know, maybe if this has got some magic enhancement which allows it to go at a million miles an hour, then uh, great. Um, but yeah, the low speed, I seem to remember this isn't amazing. So let's try and do a crawl, see what it's like at the low end. Oh, buzzing, very loud buzzing. All right, so I mean, it's not very smooth. It, it is just a three pole motor inside here and it does a fair bit of cogging. And don't forget this Loco is nearly twice as heavy as the other one. So the motor's having to do a lot more work at any time to move the thing. So yeah, I don't think that's too bad really. Um, yeah, it's definitely not very smooth though. And if I put my fingers in front of it and turn it up to 50%, put my fingers on the sprung buffers, you can see it struggles. That's 50% right there. And if I let go, it goes. Not a great deal of torque in this mechanism. And bear in mind, this is an older Loco. It's been around, it's been aging for a lot longer than the modern one has. So perhaps these would have been better when they were new. But ultimately, yeah, nothing amazing. Let's have a try with the new one then, which is obviously a much lighter Loco on its feet, but that does mean there's less work to do. So start it up. I think everything about this seems quite different. It's quieter, it seems smoother, doesn't seem quite as laboured, does it? I, th I think it is definitely the best of the two runners. Uh, not got the greatest mechanism in the world, but it is good and smooth. The speed is a bit slower, I would say, if I give it some welly. Still got some speed to it, but I don't think it's as fast as the old castle, which makes sense, yeah. No reason why it would have to go so fast. And let's see what the crawl is like. I seem to remember these are okay. Not the best we've seen, but I think probably capable of beating the old castle. There we go. So it's making a bit less of a meal of it, isn't it? It seems to do it with a bit more ease. So I think that's fairly conclusive. Uh, unless you just want pulling power and nothing else, then the new design is much better for that. All right. And with that, let's get them running. Here we go. And as you can see, both of these engines are easily capable of hauling a decent number of coaches, which I guess means that both engines are very much fit for purpose. They both work well enough and they both have a reasonable pulling power. So I think that more or less sums it up. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the differences between these two models. And while I think it's a bit more nuanced than just saying the new haul version of the Hogwarts Castle engine is by far the best, because I think the old version does have one or two features that I much prefer over the new one. I think clearly it is the new one that is the obvious winner here. It is much more realistic, it's much more accurate, it's much more modern and it does have the better mechanism. So obviously, I mean quite clearly, that is the better of the two. However, the extra power, the extra weight, the sprung buffers, the slightly better quality components in some areas, does still make the old version worth looking at, worth collecting, I think, even though, generally speaking, it is the poorer of the two, at least in my opinion. But it's been a quite an interesting discussion today. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got some thoughts on these two, if you've got experiences of your own, please do comment them down below. I'd be very interested to read them. But I think for now, that will just about do it. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. All right, cheers, folks. Take care.